His book is fascinating. We're here to talk about it tonight. Please welcome the man who was cactus, pigeons, uh, the, what else did he do? Cact oh, vanilla fudge, played with Ozzy Osbourne, Rod Stewart, Jeff Beck, and so many more, and did write the song, Do You Think I'm Sexy? Please welcome Mr. Carmine a piece. So the reason, you know, I got into the making of the book, but the reason why I did it like that, I, because you know, I just wanted it to be really honest. I wanted the reader to get the feel of what it was like to be in, you know, big rock bands in those days when those times were pretty crazy. And, you know, they're a lot freer than they are now. What attracted you to the drums? How did it start? Well, uh, it was my cousin Joey who had a drum set in his house, and every time we went to his house, which was, you know, we went there quite a bit because we were an Italian family, I would play his drums, and I got really inspired by playing his drums, and I stopped banging on the pots and pans, you know. And my, I guess my folks really got the idea and the message. Maybe we should do something with this, you know. And uh, after a while, they bought me toy drum sets that broke. Uh, and then they bought me a real drum set at the, the very first Sam Ash store in Utica Avenue in Brooklyn. And uh, I remember this drum set was sitting at the top of the shelf. It was like 55 bucks they paid for it. And uh, I put it down in my cellar. And I went down there every day. From playing, I saved up enough money to buy myself in 1964 a brand new Chevy Super Sport 327 four speed. Uh -huh. Nice. <laughs> and I, I was very proud of it because I bought it myself. He was this guy who was a really, really amazing player that had a name around New York City. You know, back in those days, in like 63, 64, we would all play the clubs in New York City. And, and he had a, a great name, even though amongst the musicians, you know, even though like if you went to see him play, there'd be nobody there. And we played some shows with him, uh, you know, 77th and Broadway, which is now very luxurious and, and expensive. Back in 1963, it was that movie Panic in Needle Park. I don't know if you ever saw that, but it was like all druggies and hookers and dealers and everything. And that, that's what our audience was, you know? And it was me and my band and him and his band. And uh, we went up and one of these apartments, as I remember his prostitute owned it, and we're hanging out and talking about maybe one day making it, you know? And uh, next time I saw this guy, I was in London, I was in Vanilla Fudge, and he was Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> when you're on the stage, and like, we just played with Vanilla Fudge, we played the Sweden Rock Festival. We also played the same festival with King Cobra. And both times, when you hear an audience of like, 8,000 people clapping and screaming. It is like, it's amazing. I mean, it's just an amazing feeling knowing that. Uh, so this song was, uh, when I was with Rod, Rod said, you know, I want everybody to go back to the band he's talking to, and I want you to come back with a song like this. And the song like this was Miss You by the Rolling Stones. So. I went back home and I fooled around on my piano, made a demo with my buddy, came back, gave it to Rod, he loved it, we practiced it, we rearranged it, we recorded it six times, finally ended up being, do you think I'm sexy? <laughs> went to number one in every free country in the world, and uh, by far the biggest single he's ever had, he even says that, and you know, Rod wrote the intro to the book as well, and uh, so I have a rock version I do. And we're going to get everybody singing tonight, I think. Guys, can you sing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. Can you sing? Yeah. That's what I thought. They can sing. You ready? All right, here we go. One, two, three. You want to clap your hands? You can do that too. Two, three. Four. 